One of the things that I love to do is play with batteries and solar. And today we've got a solar charge controller from my friends over at Bouge RV. So we're gonna hook it up and put it through its paces and see what we can figure out about it. This is an MPPT solar charge controller and it can do up to 30 amps of output. I don't really think we're gonna use the manual much because that's not what fun and exploration is all about. We have a temperature connector. You have a couple of fork terminals which you can use to plug your wires in. I brought some wires to make this easy for me. And then the charge controller itself. So you should read the owner's manual on these kind of things. You wanna make sure that your solar array's input power does not overpower the charge controller and you wanna make sure that the charge controller's output doesn't overpower your battery. I've already checked that out and what I've got is a 100 watt panel which puts out 12 volts and I have a 100 amp hour battery which can receive up to 100 amps direct input current. So I am under on the solar side and over on the battery side. So I'm good to go. As far as size goes, it is a pretty decent size. There's a nice heat sink on the back, mounting holes on the side, control panel here so you can see what display is going on. And then on the bottom side, on the business end here, this is where it gets to be important for people like us. TTL, transistor, transistor logic, that's gonna be communication type stuff. We have that temperature probe that I showed you earlier. We have all of our hookups. We have the solar input and output. And this is weird, I don't know why they did this, but the battery load, battery load. So two positives, two negatives. And usually the way these load devices work out is they've got either built-in timers or sun up, sun down, based on amount of sun hitting the panel, will turn this on or off. So we'll take a look at that also. And then if you have a bigger system, this is an RS-485 port, so you can plug this in and do some monitoring and look at it on a control panel and stuff. And then on the front, we've got the select and enter buttons. But what we need to do is we need to get this thing plugged in so that we can see what that display says. And of course, with any solar video, I got to show you the, the, the sky that we're working with, the sunlight that we're working with. And there's the picnic table. Now my solar panel, as you all are going to see, is a foldable solar panel for today. This is made by All Powers, and this is a 100 watt solar panel. And I like it because it folds up small enough to fit into a backpack and so this can go with me anywhere I want to go and it is roughly picnic table sized and it will get the job done for us. So there is our live solar panel and we're not really facing 100% of the sun so we're not going to get a full 100 watts out of that panel. And then broken up the business side of things I made up a nice little set of cables here that has ferrules on it and these are actually fairly easy to put on. You find the right size, you shove it over and you run a special crimper. And I've got a link in the description down below for the crimpers on this and they come with a bunch of ferrules and you'd be all set. So this little access hatch comes off and that tilts up out of the way and we're going to plug in the solar panel first. So we'll loosen that up. The best part about ferrules is no frayed wires to deal with when you do this kind of thing. Get that in nice and tight. And then that folds down. And then and that covers up and it's all nice and pretty. You need some place for all that energy to go to and it cannot be full. If the closer this gets to full, the harder it is for the solar charge controller and the solar panel to do its job. And this one here, I drained about 10 amp hours out. So it's still pretty close to being full, which is gonna give us a little bit of a challenge, but I think we can handle it. And this is a pretty cool battery. This is a group 24 size battery. So it's a little small. And then, like I said, you wanna make sure, where is it? Max continuous charge current, 100 amps. And the charge controller is a 30 amp charge controller. So this will be able to absorb whatever that charge controller can throw at it. I spent quite a while pushing buttons on the front panel of this thing. There's only two of them, but they've got them addressed in a kind of a weird way. And it's not very easy. I even broke out the manual to take a look at what to do with these buttons. And there's a variety of combinations. I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you what's going on here. So we get into section seven, page seven. It tells you what to do with the display interface. And it tells you about how to operate the keys to get into the menu. So it says, press select or press enter. There's only two buttons, select and enter. So it's gotta be one of those two, right? Pressing select moves backwards in the menu, pressing enter moves forward in the menu. Okay, that's easy enough. And then it says parameter setting interface. Press and hold the select button for two seconds. And then down here it says work mode. On the main menu interface, press and hold the button for five seconds to enter the working mode. Somehow I have to get into the menu interface in the first place. And if I push select, okay, now I'm in E01. Is that the menu interface? Okay, so now we do it for two seconds. One 1,000, two 1,000, and let go and it goes back to the beginning. And now I can't do the single press to get in there anymore. I just have to wrap around the menu until I get there. Let's do it for five seconds this time. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand. And now I get these three bars on the side over here. I have no idea what those are, but if I push the enter button, I can make them go down and then back up. 
And if I press the select button, I can make them go up and then back down. And then if I long press the enter button, it will save and then the backlight will go off and the device will reboot. Let's see if Bluetooth is any better. So we keep turning the page past here. I was able to get into it once, but I don't know what I did to get into it. But if we turn the page far enough, we'll get through all the different menu options and there is a QR code. So I'm gonna scan that with the phone right there. And we'll download it for Android. And I'd like to go into the Play Store. Let's open the Play Store. Let's install. I have the sun right behind my head as I'm doing this. So we're also recording the screen on the phone. So we'll be able to see what the phone app is showing us. Do I want Bouge RV to send me notifications? Sure, this is the Bouge RV app, not the Bouge RV company. So it's not like it's gonna send me marketing messages. It's gonna send me messages about, I hope alerts and alarms and so forth with my solar panel and charge controller. We'll see. User agreement and privacy policy, sure. And then, it wants me to log in. I ain't logging in unless I really have to. Okay, so we hit the plus key and we do visitor login. Really? I've got to log in for this? All right, I will register for you guys and then we'll be right back. Okay, so the login form was interesting. It wanted my email address. It wanted a verification code, but how am I supposed to get the verification code? There is a verify button that you push, which then sends you an email to the email address you typed in, but it's not... It's not terribly intuitive. It should say like send verification code or something. And then it wants a password. And your password has to have letters and numbers, but nothing besides letters and numbers. And mine had an excla exclamation point in it, which it no longer has. And I've already told you letters and numbers. So hack away. Yeah, that's a little behind the times. So I'm gonna hit add device. And this is asking for permission. And I don't know why it does this, but this is more of an Android Bluetooth thing than it is a Bouge RV thing. It's just, it's just the way the thing works. It's the way the world works. And usually it wants precise instead of approximate. I'm gonna try approximate while using the app. Say allow, and yep, it needs precise location permission. And we found a charge controller. Let's connect to it. There we go, we are now connected and it is online. New equipment, you can learn about this equipment through the T About Ching video. I'm gonna skip the video. Let's go right in, okay. This looks like a lot of other solar and battery apps that I have seen. And we need to go into parameter set. System voltage is 12 volts. 12 volts is my battery voltage. So I'm gonna pick 12, confirm. And so here's where I get to set the battery type. Sealed lead acid, gel, flooded lead acid, LifePo or user. Custom battery, USE. I'm gonna pick LifePo because it's a lithium iron phosphate battery. And this is something that I was able to do through the front panel, but I can't replicate it. I can't figure out how to get in and do it a second time. So there it is. LifePo 4, confirm. Charging switch to enable to charge the battery or not. And then let's see, charge setting, charge controller, charging current. You can't go above 30, 30 is fine. Boost charging voltage, 14.4. Boost charging reconnect voltage, 13.2. Lithium battery, low temperature charging protection. Nice. Charging protection temperature. Charging recovery temperature. Excellent, so this does have the ability to not charge below a certain temperature. Discharge settings, over discharge voltage 11.1, over discharge restoring voltage 12.6. Load settings, load mode is normal on mode, manual mode or pure light control. And there's the wind blowing my solar panel. Manual mode, light control delay, light control voltage, pure light control, okay. So that will tell me A mode or B mode. And if we look in the manual, it probably says A is when it comes on and B is when it goes off or something along those lines. Load mode, manual mode, confirm. Okay, I don't normally use the load settings, but if you had this on your RV and you had some outdoor security lights, you could configure them to come on when the sun goes down or at 9 p.m. or whatever time it is that you want, and you could also configure them to go off again. So it's a pretty nice thing to have. And you can get up to 11 volts for the lights. So I'm gonna put it back down to five, just in case I plug something in, which I don't think I'm ever gonna do. So that's all of the charge settings, the discharge settings, the load settings, and there's this expert mode, which doesn't seem like it's added anything that I can see here on this screen. So we'll go back into real time, and it's telling me that it's got 100%. I don't know how it knows what 100% is, but also it's only plugged into the battery right now. And it's telling me the battery has 13 volts, zero current and zero power. And it's telling me that its temperature sensor says the controller is 77 and the battery is 77, but there's no, there's no battery temperature there. And the load is off. And now the load is on. We'll turn the load back off. So you can turn that on and off. So you could turn your lights on and off from inside your RV at your phone. That's pretty cool. So I think what we need to do next is plug in the solar panel. And so I have the sun directly behind me. <laughs> And so I have the power pole cable for the solar charge controller side of things. And let's see what the 
app says when I plug it in. We are now plugged in. Solar panel voltage 22.7, current 1.74 amps, power 30 watts. So it seems like they put a lot more effort into the Android app than they did into the front control panel. But the front control panel does give you some useful information. So the display looks even better in the uh, direct sunlight here, but uh, we've got 2.4 amps that have come in so far, 13.8 volts. The MPPT is up and the Bluetooth is on and we've got sun into the panel instead of the little moon icon. There's that E menu. Temperature, 77 degrees Fahrenheit on the battery. 82 degrees Fahrenheit on the controller. The controller's sitting in the sunlight. Zero kilowatt hours consumed on the load port. So battery to load, zero kilowatt hours. Battery to load, zero amps. All that's true. And then we haven't gotten a thousand watt hours into the battery from the sun yet. And then two amps from the panel, 15 volts from the panel, 13.8 volts to the battery, 2.1 amps to the battery. Let's take a walk while we look at the solar panel. Get the sun out of my eyes and get me off of the panel itself as the shadow. We've got 20.2 volts, 1.63 amps, and 33 watts. And so let's block off some of the panel. There we go. So we've dropped down to 0.9 amps. Put that down and we'll switch the camera angles for you. Open her back up. 1.73 amps. Close it down. 0.97 amps. Close it down even farther. 0.61 amps, 0.48 amps, 0.28 amps, and this should be pretty close to zero. Still getting some voltage, but no, no amps. It's pretty quick to switch. Do a big switch. Oh, that dropped down real far. Doesn't it doesn't like going that way, that direction. But folding one up at the end isn't too bad. Seventeen point three volts, one point seven nine amps. Awesome, fairly reactive, I like it. All right, so overall, I like it a lot. It does the job. I would like for it to be a little bit more user-friendly from the front panel, but the application more than makes up for it on your cell phone. I do like that it is pretty quick to tell me how the input is coming from the solar panels, which means I can move the solar panels around and kind of aim for best sun. And I love the fact that it's got that dual readout, the readout of what the solar panels are doing and the readout of what the battery panels are doing because some other charge controllers only have the amount of wattage that are going into the battery as their display. And so that is a game changer for this device. So what you can do is get to your campsite and arrange what you think is a good way for the sun. And then you can verify it come midday when the sun is supposed to be hitting you with its best stuff. And some of the other ones that I've tested out do not do that. So besides just solar charge controllers, Bouge RV does a tremendous amount of other things that help you out with your RV. And they're helping me out on my channel here with the solar entry gland, the wiring to go from the solar panels on the roof to the charge controller, and then some more wiring to go from the charge controller to the batteries. And that is coming up on the channel for future projects. We've got to get everything installed and running. And hopefully you want to come along with me for the journey by clicking that subscribe button down below. There is a link in the description down below for more information. Check it out. Otherwise, there's a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. I'll see you over there.